a symmetric block cipher that takes 64 bits of plain text input and produces 64 bits of cipher text as output. So it encrypts 64 bits at a time. It uses a 64-bit key as input, but in fact only 56 of those 64 bits of key are actually used in the encryption. The other eight bits are a parity check. To, to demonstrate DES, I'm going to use this academic version of DES called Simplified DES. It uses the similar operations, but it just cuts down, instead of using 64-bit blocks, it cuts down to eight bits, just so we can go through an actual full example, or at least a, a, some parts of the example on the screen or on the board. So simplified DES is not for real world use, but we'll see and compare it to real DES after we go through the example. Simplified DES, we deal with 8-bit blocks. So it's just cut down to, to operate similar to DES. Eight-bit, we look at 8 bits of plain text and we'll produce 8 bits of cipher text. The key will be 10 bits. And we in real DES, we have 16 rounds. That is, we apply some function and then repeat it 16 times. In simplified DES, just two to, to speed things up. Uh, the steps that we'll see in the diagram of what, what is the, in the steps we apply. This captures the overall diagram for simplified DES. And it looks similar to real DES, except it has only two rounds in this diagram. Real DES has 16. How we read this is that we have to encrypt plain text to get ciphertext. If we have ciphertext and want to decrypt to get plain text, we go in this direction and we'll explain the blocks. But in fact, in both cases, we take uh, our original key, in this case a 10-bit key, and we generate what's called round keys or subkeys, K1 and K2. And this will be round one, round two. We'll use sub key or round key K1 in round one and K2 in round two. In real DES, we do a similar thing where we generate 16 round keys and use one in each of the rounds. So there's this key generation step followed by the encryption. What are all these blocks? We'll go through them, but in, in summary, the ones with a P, initial permutation, permutation 10, permutation 8, we'll see another one I think, permutation 4, they are permutations, which means transpositions or simply rearrangements. They take some input and rearrange the bits. We're operating on bits now, not, not English letters, but remember rows column, we took, right, going backwards, we took some characters and rearranged them we did a transposition or a permutation on those input characters. We'll do the same in all of these. IP is an initial permutation. P10 and P8 are different permutations. In fact, switch or swap, SW here, is also a permutation. It takes eight bits and swaps the halves. So it puts the first four bits last and the last four bits first. We'll see that in the example. A shift is a left shift, again a permutation. Take eight bits, shift it all to the left, wrap the first bit around to the end, similar to a Caesar cipher, which shifts to the right. Okay, so just a permutation. That will not help us. So there's permutations, and then we'll see in detail that this f, this function, it's called a round function, is where the details are, and that will include some permutations as well as a substitution. And the substitution is what adds the security. We need the substitution in there. Without it, then it'll be very easy to break. Simplified DES as well as real DES, the actual permutations, how we rearrange the bits, is defined. It's standard and it's known by everyone. So we'll these are the definition of them. We'll return them and return to them when we need them. Not quite yet. So we'll return to them through our example. Let's start with an example and generate a key. And we'll see the steps in detail. The example 
I think you have a printout in your handouts of an example. I'll try and go through it on the screen and we'll calculate it as we go, but you, you have it already printed out. Uh, I'll show you. You have this document which goes, gives all the details of what we're going to go through at the moment. So try and follow along and see what's happening. Let's try and start with a key and generate the round keys. And I've just chosen a random key for this example, so our key that we'll start with, key K, 10 bits, That's the key that we've chosen. For example, the user chooses a random key and shares it with the, the recipient. So both sides, the encryptor and decryptor, must have this shared secret key. We'll have some plain text I'll introduce in a moment. The first thing that we must do is generate subkeys. And the steps are defined here. We take 10 bits as input. The 10-bit key is input, and the way we read this diagram, so this arrow with the slash sewer and 10 means 10 bits are flowing through here in order. P10 is a permutation. It takes 10 bits in and rearranges them in some way, in some defined way, and produces 10 bits out, of course. It's just a permutation in this case. And we'll, in fact, we'll treat it as two different halves, the left and the right half, five bits at a time. Then we'll do a left shift on each half. LS means left shift. Shift the bits to the left by one position. So with five bits, move them to the left, where the leftmost bit will become the rightmost bit. It'll wrap around. We do it on each half. And then we'll feed them in and do another permutation, P8. In fact, this permutation will take 10 bits in and will produce, produce eight bits out. So it permutates n deletes two bits to get the output K1, the first round key. And the outputs of those left shifts will be fed down to do another left shift, left shift by two positions. P8 will be applied again, we'll get the second round key K2 out. So let's, let's go through that with our 10 bits, our 10 bit key. So the first thing is we apply P10. So with our key, after applying P10, that rearranges those 10 bits. But how? And that's defined on one of the slides. P10, if we go back, is defined as if these are the 10 bits coming in, bit 1 through to bit 10, then the order in which they come out are defined by the second row. The first bit moves to the seventh position, the tenth bit moves to the sixth position, the third bit moves to the first position, and so on. So that's a fixed permutation. It just rearranges the bits. We'll see when we look at real desk, it has the same. There's a, a large, defini a large uh, list of bits that says, of these 64 bits, we rearrange them in this manner. Why is that coming up? Connect. Let's get rid of this error. Okay, so let's do that permutation P10 where the, well, the third bit will become the first bit and so on. You do it and just check that it makes sense. And I'll write it down just so it's clear in this instance, not for all the others. What do we have? These and what do 
we have? Three, five, seven, three, five, two, seven, four, ten. That's a two. We'll go through slowly in the first case and then we'll speed up as we go through the, uh, the next steps. So the result after we apply permutation P10 is that the third bit, 1, becomes the first bit. The fifth bit, 0, becomes the second bit. The second bit, 0, becomes the third bit and so on. 7, 4, 10, bit 1, bit 9, bit 8, bit 6. So that's all. Very simple. Rearrange the bits. And we'll see the other per permutations are very similar. Uh, different arrangements, and we'll talk about why uh, particular arrangements are chosen later but let's just go through and, and perform the operations. That is the first step. So the 10 bits that come out, we're at this position. We treat them as two halves and do a left shift on each half. Left shift by one position. So you split them into two halves now, and after doing a left shift, focusing on the first five bits, everything moves to the left, where the leftmost bit ends up as the rightmost bit. And similar for the right half. And next, so that's the output of the left shifts. They feed into P8, another permutation. But note that P8 takes 10 bits in, produces 8 bits out. And it's defined as this select and permutate. So two bits are going to be removed as the output, bits 1 and 2. So we get 6, 3, 7, 4, 8, 5, 10, 9 as the rearrangement. Bits 1 and 2 are going to disappear. And after P8, we'll get 8 bits and they'll be following P8. The first two bits disappear, so now we have 10 bits, they're going to disappear and these remaining 8 bits are going to be rearranged according to P8, the definition of P8. I will not write down the rearrangement, you need to check back on the, the, the slide as to what that definition is. But just mix them up. That is in fact key, key 1, round key for round 1. We'll use that later. That's this output here, K1. The previous input to P8 is taken again and perform, we perform another left shift on each of the halves by two positions. So we'll continue and we'll do another left shift by two positions this time, not one, and that is taking this one and this value. So take those five bits and do a left shift by two positions. Of course, wrapping around where necessary. So just focusing, for example, here, this bit, if we shift to the left by two positions, comes to here, and then here. This second bit, one, two positions. So the two ones end up here on the output, and the three zeros, of course, will be there. 
So we skipped over P8, that was just used to get K, K1. And the last, last step, P8 is applied again. On those 10 bits, apply P8 and you'll get K2. And P8 is the same as it was defined before. Remove the first two bits and rearrange the remaining eight. And we get, I have the answers from before. You can check. That will be K2. So the operations are very simple. In fact, in real desk, they, they're that simple. We're shifting bits, we're rearranging bits. Transpositions in this case. Yep. Yes. It, in this case, it, it, this is the algorithm. It's defined like this. Whenever you have a key, the, the steps we're doing now is generating the round keys. The output of this step, we started with our 10-bit key. We get K1 and K2 as output. We always apply those steps that we've gone through, always using that fixed definition of P8, left shift, and P10. It doesn't change. So very simple. And the same in DES. We'll just see that the, the permutations have more bits than, than what we're dealing with here. So we get two round keys. This is the key generation stage. We'll use them in a moment. Just go back to put everything into context. What we just did was this middle part. Whenever we have our input key, the user chosen key, we generate two round keys, K1 and K2, by P10, left shift, P8, left shift, P8. And then we'll use those two keys when we encrypt our plain text. And we'll go through that step of encrypting the plain text. But it turns out with simplified DES and even real DES, decryption also uses those same round keys. So when someone receives ciphertext and they want to decrypt, they take the same 10-bit key, follow those exact same steps, and they'll get the same values of K1 and K2. And we'll return to it, but we'll notice that decryption follows the exact same steps as encryption. Encryption we'll see is IP, F of K, SW, F of K, IP, the inverse IP. Decryption, exactly the same steps. The only difference is that we'll use the round keys in the opposite order. In encryption, K1 is used first and then K2. In decryption, K2 and then K1. The benefits of encryption and decryption being the same operations is that you only need to implement it once. You implement encryption and you now have an implementation of decryption. That's a, a significant practical advantage. So let's now encrypt some plain text. Any questions? Easy so far and it will only get easier as we go. We will not go through all the steps, don't worry. But just some st initial steps. Let's try again. We'll need K1 and K2, and we'll need some plain text to encrypt. I've chosen some plain text. We'll return to K1 when we need it. Some random plain text. So that's, we want to encrypt this 8-bit block. If I had a thousand bits of plain text, then I'd have to break it into 8-bit blocks and encrypt one block at a time. So what do we do to encrypt? The details are here. A little bit more detailed than the overall diagram. This is the encryption phase. And it's hard to see uh, at this size, but we start with 8 bits plain text. 
IP is what we call the initial permutation. It's a permutation we do just at the start. We only do it once in the encryption. We'll see at the end we do an inverse initial permutation. Okay. Nothing complex there. And then these two dark grey boxes are the rounds. And they involve some permutations. In fact, EP is expand and permutate, meaning we're going to take four bits in and produce eight bits out. So we take four bits, expand to get eight bits, rearrange. We're going to take our key K1, which we just generated, an exclusive OR with the output here. We're going to split it into two halves and feed four bits at a time into the two S boxes. S0, S1 are called S boxes. Substitution boxes. So the operations we've seen so far are just transpositions, permutations. The other main operation in cryptography is a substitution. We're going to replace bits with other, or sets of bits with other sets of bits. So we'll see the details of them. We'll take the output, they'll produce two bits out. We'll have another permutation. We're going to XOR with the left half of our original output here. We'll get four bits and four bits, and then we'll swap the halves, and we'll do it all again. One round, a second round. Let's go through just the first few steps, and then we'll uh, give you the answer, so you can check if you need. First, the initial permutation. And like the other permutations, it's defined. Bits 1 to 8 become rearranged in, in this order. Okay, So that's fixed. It's always fixed. It's always those values. Rearrange, and you get what do you get? Tell me the values. Try it. Bit two become the second bit on the input becomes the first bit on the output. The sixth becomes the second. and so on. What have I done wrong? I've got the wrong answer in front of me. Sorry, I'm going to go back and start again. I've got the wrong plain text. Lucky I noticed before we got halfway through. Let's try a different plain text because I only have the answer to that one. I misread my notes. This is the plain text I want to try because uh, I have the answers and we can check and confirm at the end. Let's forget about the first plain text. But we do the same initial permutation. The second bit becomes the first, and the sixth bit becomes the second, and so on. And in fact, where I misread is that that becomes one. And what do you get? This is where I misread the plain text. That will be the output after we rearrange those eight bits according to IP. That is the output of IP. And in fact, now we, we operate on two halves. The right half, we're going to feed into this block here denoted as F, uppercase F. The left half we'll return to later. We'll need it later. So the right half, the right four bits, we expand and permutate. And then XOR with the key K1. 
and expand and permutate is defined as this. Four bits in, we're going to repeat those four bits and rearrange them as defined that the first bit becomes the second bit and the eighth bit, the second bit on input becomes the third and the fifth bit on output and so on. So we expand and permutate only on the rightmost half. So that was just on those four bits. Then we XOR with K1. And K1 is what we generated before. From before, K1 was, what do we have? If you do an XOR between those eight bits, one XOR one. Everyone remember their their basics of XOR. When they're the same, we get zero. When they're different, we get one. And then we're going to input, split that into two halves and input that into our S boxes. And that's really the next step that we need to go through that's different from before, then we, the rest is easy. So just to show where we're at. We had eight bits out about expand and permutate. We XOR with K1 and take four bits into S0 and four bits into S1. Where the S boxes, we perform a substitution. And the way that we use it, we're going to, the S boxes are also defined. The substitutions, like our uh, monoalphabetic cipher defines how we, what do we replace our plain text characters with? What do we get on output? This defines, given an input, what is going to come out. And it's defined, we define it as two matrices, S box 0, S box S1. So focusing on S0, we have four bits in. The way that we interpret this, so this is the S box, we have a four-bit input, bits one through to bit four. Bit one and bit four specify the row. Bit two and bit three specify the column. And we just do a simple matrix lookup, and with the element that we find becomes the output. Where we label our columns and rows in, in binary. So zero, one, two, three in decimal. So row zero, or in binary, zero, zero, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and column 0, 1, 2, 3. And bit 1 and 4 specify the row, 2 and 3 specify the column. So what's the output? Find out the output when we feed these values into our two S boxes. Four bits are going to come in and two bits are going to come out. <coughs> With S1, the row is going to be 0, 0, and the column 1, 1. Bits 1 and 
Let's go back. Bits 1 and 4 specify the row, 2 and 3 specify the column. So row 0, 0, column 1, 1, or in decimal, row 0, column 3. Look up your S box. Row 0, the first row, column 3, the last row, output 1, 0. Okay, so it's just a look up on that defined substitution box. So the output for S1 will be 1, 0. And then do the same for the, the right four bits to get S1. What does S1 give us? First and fourth bit, column, second and third bit, and just do a look up in the S box. If we can get past the S boxes, you'll see that the rest is all permutations and easy. Any questions on the S boxes or, or the other aspects of simplified desk so far? Find out the output of S1. Is it 1, 1? Row, now think of the rows and columns in binary, it's the easiest way, row 0, 1, column 1, 1. So when we look at our matrix, we, uh, if you want to convert a decimal, then 0 through to 3. 0, 1, 1, 1. In S box, S1. The second row, 0, 1. The last column, 1, 1, produce output 1, 1. Just a look up on that matrix, our substitution. We are the output of S0 and S1. We have four bits. We permutate with P4. We'll get four bits out. Then we XOR those four bits with the left half that came out of the initial permutation. Let's quickly do that and then we'll get to our answer. So we're going to apply P4 now. Four bits in to P4. We'll produce those four bits out. Where does that come from? Four bits in, one, zero, one, one. P4 is defined here, a rearrangement. Bit two becomes the first bit, and then the la remaining three bits at the end. And XOR that with The left half, we have it up somewhere. This left half of the initial permutation, if we can bring it down, is then reused down here. One zero one zero. This 1010 one, zero is the left half from our initial permutation output. So you can follow it up on here or on the slide. It comes from the initial permutation. Exclusive OR. <coughs> 
And now we bring go back to our slide. What do we just do? We just took the four bits out of P4, exclusive all with the four bits from the initial permutation. We get four bits out. Combine it with the original right half of the initial permutation. I'll bring that down. The right half here is now reused. One zero zero one. And the last, in fact, that's the end of our round. That's the end of the round. We swap the halves and then repeat all of it again, repeat the round again. <coughs> what we've just done is we started with plain text, we did the initial permutation, then we did everything inside this dark grey block. Now we're going to swap the halves and then we repeat everything inside the dark grey block but using K2 as an input at this step. And then we'll get some 8 bits out, do an inverse initial permutation, we'll get our ciphertext. So let's swap the halves and then I'll give you the answer. You can do the rest in your own time. Swap the halves. So this is the swap. Then you apply our round function denoted on the diagram as f of k using k2 as an input. You'll get as an output, I've done it before, I hope. As the output, you'll get 8 bits of... Then you'll do the inverse initial permutation. And you get your output ciphertext. We, don't worry, we'll not go through many ciphers in this much detail. We'll just use this one to demonstrate that in fact complex ciphers are just made up of simple operations. So as the output of our swap, swapping the halves, we get these 8 bits. You apply the, the dark grey block again but use a K2 as an input and we calculated K2 before. You get some 8 bits, you apply the inverse initial permutation, and then you get 8 bits of ciphertext, and we're done. You, as homework, will try and work out what the in inverse initial permutation is. Well, the inverse of IP. So try and work out what it means to do the inverse of this operation, this permutation. Try. Oh, it's the inverse, yes. Let's see what happens. It's, it's like thinking about the, the rows columns a little bit. Just be careful with it. So we're done. We've encrypted using simplified desks. If we want to decrypt, in fact, we do the exact same steps, we, except we take our ciphertext, 8 bits, exact same steps, 
but we use K2 first in the first round and then K1. Okay? So we just rearrange the ordering of the keys. So you know simplified deaths now. To finish in the last two minutes, that was the example we went through. Comparison of simplified deaths and real deaths, some, some aspects. So simplified deaths is just for educational purposes. Real deaths, some of the differences. All right, we, now we have 64-bit blocks, not eight. And we have 16 round keys. It turns out the round keys in real deaths are 48 bits. So K1, K2, K3, up to K16 will each be 48 bits. They'll be derived from the original input key. Right? The initial permutation is 64 bits. The function f, if you look in the diagram, operates on 32 bits. Simplified deaths had two S boxes. Real deaths has eight S boxes. But the same concepts. 16 rounds, not two rounds. This is this concept of keep applying transpositions and substitutions and you get a better and better ciphertext from a security perspective. So you could go away and do simplified deaths if you had the definition of all those operations. And for your reference, I included them here, just taken from the textbook. Real deaths goes through 16 rounds. Here's the in initial permutation, IP, and the inverse. 64 bits in, we rearrange those 64 bits, so the first bit ends up here, the 58th bit becomes the first bit, and so on. That's all. The expand and permutate, permutation functions, a single round, we take our right half, expand and permutate, XOR, S box, permutate, XOR, and keep going. All right. The S boxes. With simplified desk, we just had our two 4x4 four four matri matrices. Here we have eight S boxes. But same concept. We just do a lookup in the S box to get the output. In this case, we get output four bits. I think we have a decimal four bit value there. And it's slightly different in the key generation, but uh, it's not much uh, more complex. So, we now know simplified DES. You could now expand that knowledge to real DES. And real DES is one of the most used ciphers in the world. It's no longer recommended, but if you consider the, its use over the last 30 or 40 years, it's one of the most used ciphers in the world. Uh, and many other ciphers use similar concepts. Rounds, substitutions, transpositions, XOR, generate keys, and so on. So this is one example of uh, a real and relevant cipher. On Thursday, we'll talk about some of, the, some of the reasons it uses these operations and some of the limitations of them and then move on to the next topic. Okay. Let's stop there.